I'm 89. I'm 89. I'm 89. I'm 89. My goodness, I'm 90. I don't feel any different. I don't look any different. Wow. Thanks for the memories of family I adore. I couldn't ask for more and friends like you beside me to make my spirit soar. I thank you so much. I want to thank you, Fred, for taking the reins and taping some of the stories that make people laugh. At 90 years, I've reached a special era in my life and I'm going to make the most of it. When I decided to do this, uh, my one concern was, of course, what am I going to wear? Because, you know, I get dressed up to go to the bathroom. I was brought up in a home that was filled with love, song, and laughter. My mother had a beautiful voice, and she sang Yiddish songs, and that's where I learned them. And, uh, I, and she loved to tell off-color jokes and listen to them. She had a, a contagious laugh, and I brought home a slew of them from college and made her laugh, and it, 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 I remember to this day, these two men died and went to heaven at the same time. They both professed to be Robbie Burns, but the interviewer said, you can't be two Robbie Burns, you're just gonna have to prove to us who the real Robbie Burns is. Give us a poem and use the word Timbuktu. And the first said, as I was walking in the sand, I came across a caravan. I will follow you if your destination is Timbuktu. And the other one said, Tim and I a hunting went. We came across three girls in a tent. Since they were three and we were two, I booked one and Timbuktu. Now it's an interesting aside about that story. My granddaughter Jamie must have overheard me saying that story, telling it. And she told it to one of the Hillel teachers. And the Hillel teacher said to her, where did you hear that? She said, my nana told to me. <laughs> Remember, Jamie? That was really wonderful. Oh, this is a good one. Sam was playing poker with the boys. He lost $1,000, has a heart attack, and dies right then and there. And the... The boys have to go home and tell his wife, Sarah, that he's dead. How are they going to do it? So they decide, look, they can't put it off. They're going to have to go home and they're going to have to tell her what happened. So they get to the house. Sarah's there. And one of them says, you know, Sarah, Sam lost $1,000 at the poker table tonight. $1,000? He should drop dead. So he says, he did. <laughs> a man went to the doctor, yeah. an older man, and he asked the doctor if he could take Viagra. And the doctor said, I don't see why not. He said, but I want to tell you. I want to tell you just how to take it. You'll take it Monday and Tuesday, and you'll skip Wednesday and Thursday, and you'll take it again Friday, and we'll see what happens. About a month later, he meets his wife, and he says, how are you, Mrs. Goldberg, and how's Mr. Goldberg? She says, Mr. Goldberg died. Mr. Goldberg died? He says, from the Viagra? She said, no, from the skipping. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Fred? <laughs> Very good. Could I dedicate this to my daughter in France? General de Gaulle retired and they were giving him uh, a celebration. And the couple who was sitting at the table with Madame de Gaulle and the general says to her, the woman says to her, Madame de Gaulle, what, what do you want to do? What, what are you looking forward to doing now that the general has retired? And she says, oh, she says, uh, I'm looking uh, for a penis. So the woman was shocked and the general gets up 
bends down and whispers in her ear, Ma Chari, it's happiness. <laughs> <laughs> My father, everything reminded him of a story, and that's where I really get my saying that everything reminds me of a story. At this point, it's important for me to tell everyone who's looking at this video that I'm offended if they say that my jokes are dirty. I like to think of them as risque or off-color because I rarely use the four-letter word unless it's necessary and that my loving partner and I used in the song that I will sing later on at the end of this presentation. <laughs> You know, just as an aside, I was reading something about Japan in the New York Times the other day. Do you know what the most important day in Japan is? Erection day. How much? Many is the time that we gather, including the family that scattered, to celebrate the things that mattered. We did have fun. There's more to come. Was, so after makes you feel good. And I hope that what I'm bringing you now will make you feel very good. A woman met a friend of hers after her husband had died a week before, and she said, you were at my husband's funeral. She says, uh, how did you like uh, the, uh, the plot where he was buried? Oh, she says, well, it was very, very nice. She says, my husband, may he rest in peace, left instructions that I pay $5,000 for the plot. I only spent two. She said, and also, how did you like the coffin that he was buried in? Well, the woman thought it was rather odd, but she said, oh, very, very, very nice. She says, my husband, may he rest in peace, left instructions to spend 3000 for the coffin. He said, I only spent one. And my husband, may he rest in peace, left instructions that I spend $10,000 for the stone. How do you like it? <laughs> Time out for some Harveys. I'm trying to figure out how you kids finally made me do something like this because telling one joke or two jokes to people is one thing, but sitting and telling a, a slew of jokes is, is not that easy. You know, I'm no Henny Youngman or no Alan King or no whatever, Milton Berle. Well, you're doing just fine. Thank you very much. Well, the man who sits at a bar and orders a drink for everybody but no Jews and the bartender says what do you have against the Jews? He says they sunk the Titanic. They sunk the Titanic? An iceberg sunk the Titanic. He said iceberg, Goldberg, Greenberg. <clears throat> Can I sing a song? Oh, by all means. My cousin Sue is awful pretty so I asked her to come to the city. She wrote right back, save your pity. I don't need no money to pay my bills cause I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, right here in these hills. Oh, a traveling man from Birmingham bought me a coat of Persian lamb and a traveling man from Texas bought me a gown and two bright red shoes with a hat that matches I got from a man from Natchez and I didn't even have to go to town. All the traveling men from far and near bring me presents when they come through here. They come up the mountain, now they puff and climb and they stay till 12 o'clock mountain time. Now a traveling man came from New York all I got from him was a lot of talk, but I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right for a mountain gal. You know, for somebody 90 years old, to remember that is pretty good. It's damn good. Now, how about the couple is... Oh, yes, yes. During the war, it was difficult to get uh, uh, passage on a train. And um, this couple were on their honeymoon. So they, they, they finally got a ticket, but it was for an upper berth, and somebody else was going to sleep in the, in the lower berth. So they were desperate, so they thought, okay, all right, we'll do it. Well, they 
get into the upper berth and she keeps saying, I, I can't realize we're married. And a little bit longer, she says, I can't realize we're married. And she keeps saying this for a number of times and the fella down on the bottom berth is getting a little irritated and he says to him, listen, will you slip her the old realizer and let's all get some sleep? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of being Jewish. I, um, I love the Yiddish language, I love klezmer music, uh, and I'll tell a few Jewish jokes, okay? A uh, little orthodox man is standing at the corner, and a car full of thugs drives by, stops the car, one pulls down the window and he says, hey Jew, what time is it? So the little Jew says, well, if you can see through my pants, you can see through my vest. <laughs> this is uh, was 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 Papa's favorite one of Papa's. I guess it's Fred's too, or else uh, I like the one about the uh, older Jewish lady uh, who went to her mailbox and and uh, and says and and has a little paper that says sex at seventy three, and she was so happy because she lived in, uh, <laughs> in unit number sixty seven and it wasn't far to walk. <laughs> Do I have to repeat that? <laughs> Here's the song I promised you that Al and I wrote for our 50th wedding anniversary. And I dedicate it to my dear, departed, loving <laughs> companion. Oh, we once had a barrel of money. You may think that it's funny, but we've got less and less, we must confess side by side. Oh, we travel to countries afar by plane, train, ship, and a car, and we spread it around, dollars and pounds, side by side. Through all kinds of weather, we really made a hit, and as long as we're together, we don't give a shit. So we've traveled and had us a ball, clicked glasses and said fuck them all, and we're happy to say we'll continue that way, side by side, side by side. Thank you. More to come, so thanks for the memories. I'd like to make a date to further celebrate all the great occasions that we commemorate, getting us together and I can hardly wait. I thank you so much.